Hello everybody, this is John with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about Labdoor.com and in particular fish oils and their testing. I originally did this video over Skype with Neil Thanadar who runs Labdoor.com but the sound just wasn't very good and you know I didn't want to throw it up with a bunch of annotations so I thought I would relay the information that we discussed. Um, I found Labdoor.com, I approached them so um, I, I found it like, ooh, I mean, it's, it's out there for anyone to find, but I approached them to do this video because I think it's very good that there's uh, somebody testing supplements um, in, in the private side of things. I think that's a good thing. Um, so one thing I want to tell you about Labdoor.com, number one, is they have a free service. Um, they also offer a yearly subscription. We don't get anything for this. Um, again, I just think this is a good thing. The yearly subscription is $50. If you get the yearly subscription, you get access to the in-depth parts of the test. They'll explain it for you. They'll make recommendations. They also will, um, there's also a smartphone app as well, and I think that comes with it free as well. And again, if you do the paid subscription, you'll get the more in-depth information. Um, so what Labdoor.com does is they buy supplements, just like you or I would off the shelf. They'll order them online from a place like us. Um, and they'll test it right there. And what they do is they test it every 12 months, so it's ongoing testing, and they will continue to add products each time they retest batches. Um, so they don't have like manufacturers coming to them and saying, hey, you know, test my product, you know, because that can, you know, hey, they're going to make sure they give them the good product or what have you. They don't, they don't bother with that. They're doing it just like you or I would buy it. But what they do, and some of you guys will like, is they do offer letter grades um, to quantify things. So everyone always asks, hey, can you guys give it, you know, a star rating or letter grading? You know, and I always think it's kind of hard to do because, you know, it, it depends on the context of what you're talking about. You know, you want me to give a letter grade to a weight gainer. Well, if you're not trying to gain weight, it's going to get a really bad score. So if you're trying to gain weight, you know, that, that's going to play a role in it. So, but they do explain their criteria and, and they're adjusting it along the way. So specifically with fish oils, what we talked about, and the thing that they do that's different in terms of the testing is, you know, it's one thing for manufacturers to do certain kinds of tests, which I think is a good thing to say, hey, this product is free of banned substances per MSF or per banned substances control group. You know, if somebody's competing in some kind of organization and they're, and they're worried about, you know, popping on a test for something banned, um, you know, I, I think some of that, by the way, is hyperbole. Athletes using steroids and then blaming a supplement is, is usually a convenient scapegoat, but that doesn't mean that it hasn't happened and supplements haven't been tainted because they have. So that's one thing, and I think that kind of testing is good. This, what they're doing is not only are they testing for some of that stuff, not, not banned substances, but they're testing for things that shouldn't be in the product. They're also testing to make sure that what is on the label is in the product. So with fish oils, that means EPA, DHA, vitamin D. EPA and DHA are the two uh, omega-3 fatty acids that most people are interested in. Um, there's ALA as well if you're using flax, but sticking to fish oils, um, they have different health benefits. And it's good to know, hey, it says it has 300 milligrams EPA and 250 DHA. You want to know that you have it. So what they've done is they've tested for that. Another thing that they've tested for is, you know, freshness, which would mean the oxidation of fish oil. Fish oils, so omega-3 specifically, is a polyunsaturated fat. They're highly susceptible to oxidation because they have a bunch of double bonds that can, um, that, that can be, be oxidized uh, from heat, uh, pH, light, things like that. They're, they're very sensitive to those changes. So um, it's, it's an interesting thing that they're doing, that they're testing it, they're quantifying it. And pretty much only one product um, required a, what you call a TOTOX score, above the upper limit. Um, and I'm going to link below, there's something, a, a nice uh, write-up I found on uh, the oxidation of omega-3 supplements in human health. And what the paper talks about, more or less, is how the clinical trials, there's not really been any of that testing on the omega-3 that's been used. And that may partially explain why sometimes you have conflicting results. I mean, on balance, the majority of research on omega-3 fats is positive in terms of their ability to uh, offer health benefits. Now, this is, this is an attempt to explain why maybe sometimes that there hasn't been as much of a benefit as uh, you, you may have seen in other research. Um, also, they do talk about how some animal studies have found that, you know, when you have oxidized polyunsaturated fats, they can be uh, detrimental or at a minimum mitigate some of the health benefits. So it's really nice to know these things to make sure that you are getting a, a fresh um, fish oil product. So I think that's really, really important. Um, again, all of this information is there. They also tested for heavy metals such as mercury. Um, and, you know, one thing I want to touch on is with a, a fish oil, it's not as much of a concern as you think because... Uh, the, the metals are hydrophobic. They're not going to end up in fat. They're more likely to be bound to protein. So 
the, all, pretty much, all, I think all of them actually passed for uh, heavy metal content. That doesn't mean that there's no heavy metals in there. In fact, most of your foods that, you know, you, you know like sweet potato, spinach, they have some of those heavy metals. So, you know, when you hear a report like, oh, my protein powder is, you know, all these metals in it. Well, those are there because they exist in um, nature. It's not as if, you know, companies are trying to add heavy metals into a product. And you also have to give things context. A small amount of it is not going to affect you. If the smallest little toxin, um, you know, killed people, the human race would have been gone long ago. And as I said, at those low levels, it's not, it's, it's not detrimental to one's health. And, and sometimes things that are otherwise harmful in higher doses are actually beneficial in smaller doses. It's called hormesis, alcohol being an example of that. Um, so that's something else to consider. But anyways, check it out at labdoor.com. You can do the free or paid subscription. Really interesting results on the uh, fish oils. And if you have questions, feel free to post them in the comments section of the video. Also, I'll link everything below that I uh, talked about in here so you guys can uh, click right through it. Um, you can check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thank you for watching.